Foundation, you founded the Nook Foundation in 2012 uh, to support kind of research in low carb, high fat. Um, so it, it's kind of interesting that you need to actually create a foundation to do this kind of research that um, can't just be done in university. But can you talk a little bit about what the, the aims and the goals of that are and uh, what is kind of the, some of the current research that you're doing? Sure. So when we started in 2012, literally there was no funding available for people who wanted to do low carbohydrate research. They, you have to fund it privately. And we raised quite a lot of money from some American supporters. And we went in to ask the question, what happens to the liver when you change your diet from a high carbohydrate to high fat? Particularly, can you provide enough glucose to the bloodstream? And we studied liver glucose production, which hadn't been done before on a low carbohydrate diet. And we showed that the glucose metabolism completely normal in people who are fat adapted. All they do is they don't use as much glucose. You replace glucose by other things, fats and ketone bodies. So you don't need as much glucose. And this is critical because my dad died of type 2 diabetes. And he was told, as all diabetics are told by conventional advice, is that you don't have enough glucose in your bloodstream. You've got to eat lots of sugar if you're diabetic. He was told that he had to eat carbohydrates every three hours. And that advice killed him. That, and that's what happens with current management of diabetes. The advice kills you. The reality is you've got a liver, because I'm diabetic, I know, you've got a liver that's overproducing glucose. So, so why would you need to add additional glucose? And what we showed is that you, the liver is overproducing, it's producing more than enough glucose, even if you're eating a high fat diet, you do not need to add carbohydrates in. So that was one of the first studies then. When we wrote the book, The Real Meal Revolution, a lot of people wrote to me and they said, gosh, you know, I've had this results and so on. And I published an early paper of 127 people who'd written to me and, and the, the profession went ballistic. They said, how can you publish a paper we are people what wrote to you, you didn't examine them, etc. I did meet some of them to confirm their stories. Mm. So that you're not allowed anecdotes. Anecdotes are not allowed. But mm. amongst those anecdotes were people who reversed their diabetes. And, and I was trained to believe that diabetes is irreversible. Mm. So, of course, I reported the patient. And one was a general practitioner whose life completely changed because he went on the diet. Another guy lost 81 kilograms of weight in 28 weeks. 28 weeks, he was averaging three kilograms a week and he kept it out for, for 28 weeks. And so I reported him and of course, this, so this, this caused a huge furor. So eventually we decided, okay, well, let's see what it really looks like. And we, we got 28 people who'd written to me and claimed they'd reversed their diabetes and we investigated them. And we found that most of them, well, that was correct. They had actually reversed their diabetes. They were no longer diagnosed as diabetic. Some did not need any medication whatsoever. Some needed to take metformin and some hadn't reversed their diabetes. But we found that the one key factor was whether they could control their cravings. That was the key. It wasn't controlling your glucose. It was controlling your food cravings. And as soon, those people who went on the start and stuck with it and got over the sugar addiction were the ones who cured their diabetes or put it in remission. The ones who did couldn't cure their addictions, their sugar addictions, their carbohydrate addictions made no difference to them. They couldn't cure their diabetes. So we learned then that it's the control of food cravings that determines whether you're going to reverse your diabetes or not. Mm. So that was the other bit. And then we, as we realized we didn't, this was very expensive research and we didn't have enough money to continue along those lines. Laboratory research is incredibly expensive. And anyway, mm. There's so much new research that has been done that we would just be repeating what other people were doing very well. So we changed our focus. And our focus now is to study interventions in poor communities. So we have a thing called the Eat Better South Africa campaign. And that shows, what we show there is that people in poor communities can eat a healthy diet and reverse many of their diseases, even though they're not look, eating a very expensive diet. So that, that was one bit. And the other bit, we launched the Nutrition Network, which is a system that educates doctors and physicians around the world and nurses and practitioners. And it's been hugely successful. We realized that we've got to convert the doctors because a doctor converts patients and patients convert other patients. So that, that's our main focus. And so our, our big research project at the moment 
as soon as the COVID ends is looking at the effects of our diet in people who are living in poor communities because they just forgotten. No one cares about them. That's what, what we've learned. Right. Excellent. Now that, that sounds very worth worthwhile. It, it, yeah. Thank excellent. You. Um, I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.